So our next color space is uh, YIQ and YUB. I've grouped these together because I think there's a single conceptual idea that's uh, going to be useful to you here. So in YIQ space, let's talk about it first. We're going to treat Y as the black and white or the luminance component. So if our original picture is this one up here in the top right, the luminance is in the Y. And in most color spaces, if you see a Y, um, except for CMYK, where that's a Y is a yellow, this Y is a luminance. So in YIQ and YUV um, and several others, this Y is luminance, meaning the black and white, the brightness of the images. And then the IQ um, is two channels, but collectively it's called the chroma. Right? So we have luminance and chroma. And you might render them like this, although nobody really ever does that. So what is I and Q? It's the hue values, right? So it's the same idea as hue. It's the hue values distributed in this 2D space. And here's the I axis and here's the Q axis. So you might get tempted to call this the sort of like blue red axis and the, I don't know, magenta green axis or something like this, but really they're just arbitrary axes in space. And there's, it's a linear transform. So YIQ can be calculated as some matrix times RGB. Um, and then you, there's another matrix that will, that will take you back. And this space was first used in uh, NTSC TV. So this is um, this is U.S. broadcast television. Oh, I, I know the answer to why my camera is frozen. You back? Yeah. Okay. So whenever I turn on the document camera, it freezes my 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 camera that's pointing in my head. So this was, this was NTSC TV. So this was uh, broadcast TV. So we now have digital broadcast TV. This is when we had analog broadcast TV. And it used in the radio frequencies, quadrature amplification modulation. I don't even know what this means because I'm not a tech lady. Um, so this was old black and white TV and they wanted to just add to it. So they were already broadcasting this. And so they said, well, if we just, we don't want to switch to RGB because then we would get rid of our black and white. So we're going to broadcast Y and then we're going to do IQ. And this I is in phase and this Q is quadrature. Again, I don't know what these mean. These are the double E radio stuff. Um, but if I receive a color broadcast, I could just take the black and white channel and show them what black and white TV. So this is where we have this. YUV sometimes. Uh, related to or called YCBCR um, is a similar kind of space. I have this Y is still my black and white. Here's my UV. My space here is a little different. I'm going to go back and forth between these two. Take a look at this chroma. This is IQ. Here's UV. Here's IQ. Here's UV. So see, not the same thing, but same idea. Where The luminance is not changing, but the chroma values are encoded in a different space. Uh, and I didn't give you the matrix here, but it's also a linear transform that does with the matrix. And you'll sometimes see these on the back of your TV. So on some um, TVs, instead of uh, just a single cable to get your whole TV signal, you'll sometimes see it's called component or they'll have YCVCR kind of thing. So you might see this as actual wires you plug in the back of your TV. These days it's mostly HDMI um, and not separate wires. But this YUV space was also a TV space. It was used for PAL, and it's also used in um, JPEG compression. It's used in a couple of different places. And we're going to see in a moment why is it used in, in all of these spaces. So it turns out if we split by intensity and chroma, humans care about the intensity more than the chroma. So I've taken this image of, of this mandrel and broken it into Y chroma one, chroma two. And I haven't labeled which chroma because I don't know if this was in IQ space or UV space or some other chroma space. And then I've blurred all three channels, one channel at a time, but all three channels. So if we blur the Y channel, the intensity channel, what you should be seeing here, for most of you, you should see a blurry looking image. So the two chroma channels have full resolution. The Y channel has reduced resolution and it looks blurry. But if we go to the two chroma channels, we blur the one of or the other of the chroma channels, and it really looks like a full res image. It doesn't look like a blurry image. Why? 
somehow we've thrown away the same amount of data. It's a three channel data. We've thrown away one of the channels and, and made it less resolution. What's going on? Well, our human brain cares. Our human brain cares about Y more than it cares about chroma. So these two color spaces, YIQ and YUV, are examples of getting us into a color space which matches more closely what our human brain does. So where is this used? So in a lot of video encoding formats, you may have seen things called 444, 411, 420. This is, if you do uh, broadcast TV or digital video encoding, it often talks about, uses these kinds of numbers. What does it mean? It's talking about the down sampling of the channels. So 444 means I'm gonna, in a two by two neighborhood block, I'm gonna, keep all four values for each of y, i, q, right? Or I could say, I'm only gonna keep two values in each of i and q, throwing away some information. So these top, and then 411 only keeps one value of each of i and q. So this is the, the most throwing away data, right? So this would have three channels times four pixels of information. This has only for the first channel, all four pixels, and then only one pixel for each of the second two channels. So this is gonna have only half as much total space on my wire or my bandwidth as this does by just subsampling. So the color images should all look kind of similar to you. There's not a lot of change in these color images. Um, they all look like they're full resolution. But if we look in the IQ space, the subsampling here in 411, there's a lot less resolution being stored here, but it, it looks the same. JPEG is another place where this is done. Um, so in JPEG, uh, here's a JPEG color image. Here's the Y channel, looks like full resolution. And then JPEG is a compression system. And I'm not gonna talk about exactly how that compression works, but you basically throw away data whenever you have a lossy compression. So JPEG says, we're gonna throw away data where humans don't care. And so it turns out, that humans don't care if you throw away data in the U and V channels. So if I put this in RGB, I can't really throw away data, not this badly in any of RGB because I'm gonna see it in my final picture. But if I switch to YUV, throw away lots of stuff, make it really chunky. So I've taken a whole eight by eight block here and basically taken it down to one value in my chroma and make it chunky like this, it's gonna get much smaller. And we know that JPEG file size are much smaller. And then when I decompress, I get back these three channels, and then I use my matrix transform to go back to RGB, and then I just play it on the screen, and I don't see anything happening. So I couldn't have done it in RGB. I have to go to one of these perceptual spaces, YIQ, YUV, something like that, if I wanna play this JPEG trick. So this is something that's really used in, gra in graphics. Like we really do use all of these color spaces. The CMY is used in printing. Um, the HSV is used because humans like them for color picking. So it's common that we switch back and forth between these different color spaces. 